Hello, and welcome to this Fast Facts episode with me, your host, Ed Bernardin. I recently had the privilege of interviewing professional race car driver Lucas Degrassi. Those of you who listened to the episode or listeners who are fans of motorsports would know that Lucas is a Formula E champion and a sustainability advocate who, in 2015, was labeled the best Formula E competitor in the world. In this episode, I ask Lucas a series of rapid-fire questions to get to know him on a more personal level. Tune in to hear about whether Lucas passed his driver's test on the first try, what his favorite sport to watch besides racing is, and what profession he would like to pursue had he not been a race car driver. And, of course, much, much more. We always end, always end with a section we call Rapid Fire. Real quick questions, real okay. quick answers. You ready? And then we'll, and then we'll let yeah. you go because I know you've got a plane to catch. All right. Rapid Fire, question number one. What was the first car you ever bought or owned? First car. I bought a Renault Clio. Uh, I got it when I, when I turned 18. My father gave it to me. Did you pass your driver's test on the first try? Yes, I did. <laughs> Tell me your best speeding ticket story. You've had a speeding ticket, I'm sure. Or not. Yes, Never. I had a speeding. I had a, I had a few speeding tickets. When I was younger, I was, let's say, less, probably less responsible than I was, than I am today with kids. Um, so I had a few speeding tickets. All right, we'll move on to the next one in case your son's listening. So what's the, fa <laughs> what's the fastest you've driven a regular car on a normal road? Well, I, I used to go to Germany a lot, so uh, no limits in certain past stages of the uh, of the motorway. So well above three forty, I did. Three forty. Wow, that that would be what yeah. over two hundred miles an hour, I think. Yes, yeah, that, yeah. way over two hundred miles an hour. All right. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> favorite sport to watch besides racing. Favorite sport to watch. Uh, tennis. If you had a career in anything that wasn't racing, what would it be? Uh, probably engineering. So on the Future Car Podcast, a lot of times we talk a lot about autonomous vehicles, as we did here a little bit. And we like to ask people, you're on a five-hour car ride in your autonomous car, your living room on wheels, living room on wheels, five-hour car ride. What is in your living room on wheels autonomous car? Uh, right now will be the Oppenheimer movie. Ah, there you go. Not Barbie. You don't. You don't want the Barbie movie. No, the, actually, I tweeted the other day. I tweeted. I tweeted the other day that I rather watch Oppenheimer back to back than Barbie, and I got fried on Twitter. Like, this is you are a horrible person. You uh, whatever. They kind of they hate me just because I am actually a big fan of the story of Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project. So I, I love techno. Like we do, we love technology. So I did a lot of like personal research about how um, atomic uh, bombs are made, hydrogen bombs, uh, and the story of how the bomb was built and the complexity of it. So I am a big fan. So when the, the movie came out, actually I watched the movie yesterday night. And um, uh, when the movie came along, I was like super excited. And just because I expressed my opinion, I don't want to watch Barbie, maybe with my daughter <laughs> in like, I don't well, know, three months from now. People fried me for that. Like you had no idea. It was like a proper fire on Twitter. Well, you know, I, uh, I'm with you on that. I couldn't believe that Barbie had 150 million in revenue and, and Oppenheimer only 80. So Barbie is twice as famous or at least popular as, as Oppenheimer is. So. But then it comes back to the main question that you, for, for, from this podcast that I take it, uh, that I will be thinking about it in the next days, which is like the, how to, the, about human behavior. It, it is, it is very, it's probably, the hardest question there is, like, how, how, how can you predict human behavior in 10 years' time? I, I, and that's what is fascinating about the stuff that we are living right now with AI, autonomous cars. It's not about the technology. The technology will be there. It's about the trust that you're going to put your kid in an autonomous car and the autonomous car will take him to school. Even if 99.9% .9 of the trips will be safer than with a human, I'm 100% sure that people will not put their kids uh, if there is the 0.01% chance of something happening. How the human brain process probabilities and information and new technology is much harder to predict than the technology itself. 
If you could magically invent one thing, what would it be? Poof. Oh, a flying, a flying machine, uh, like uh, a flying carpet from Aladdin. Uh, fly car- oh, very good. Un- if you could magically uninvent one thing, what would it be? Eliminate it from the face of the earth. I think deadly virus. They don't serve for any purpose. All right. And last question. Usually I ask people who they'd want to spend that five-hour car ride with, but I know you're going to say Leonardo da Vinci and Elon Musk, right? I know you're going to say that. So I have a different question for you. The question is, real quick now, what's the one area that those two individuals are the most alike and then the most different? Where are Leonardo and Elon the most the same and where are they the most different? What do you think? I think the most likely is the curiosity to find the truth the underlying truth of the world. I think that's what drove both of them to do what the, whatever they did. And probably the most different, I would say, is the business angle. Ellen is very business orientated and Leonardo da Vinci was just like a pure artist, pure, um, yeah, like a extremely, I don't know, exceptional individual pursuing his his stuff. Lucas, thank you so, so much. We could probably go on for more hours here. I'm, I look forward to having <laughs> definitely, you back. Definitely, definitely. Either- Actually, there's so much stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait, wait to have you back either by yourself or also with uh, Sebastian. But nonetheless, thank you so much and good luck in your next race. Thank you, Ed. Thank you very much for this uh, podcast and everybody that uh, took the time for uh, listening to us.